This is Brent of the Brookbush Institute, and in this video, we're going to go over three special or orthopedic tests for the sacroiliac joint pain. We're going to go over the sacral thrust test, the compression test, and the distraction test, which is sometimes referred to as the anterior sacroiliac joint stress test. I think we'll just keep calling it the distraction test since that's a lot easier to say. I think you'll see why we put these three tests together. They're all very similar in protocol. I'm going to have my friend Melissa come out. She's going to help me demonstrate. Now I'm going to have Melissa go ahead and start face down and the sacral thrust test is exactly what it sounds like. It is a thrust to the sacral base. It actually looks a lot like a posterior to anterior sacroiliac joint mobilization. So if you want a little bit more coaching on hand position, palpations, how to set your body up and your patient up a little bit better, I would recommend going ahead and watching our video on sacroiliac joint mobilization. That'll make this test seem really, really easy. Now just a quick recap on palpations. You want to be able to find the posterior superior iliac spine and what I like to do is kind of come from the iliac crests, work my way down and then find the bottom corner of the PSIS so I have one distinct point I'm going after. You know your PSIS has a little bit of breadth to it. Once I find that I'm going to fall off immediately medially. All right, so just fall right into that little gap that's created after the PSIS as we fall into the sacral base there. That's the S2, S3 segment. So now I know I'm right in the middle of my sacroiliac joint, which is where we want to be for this test. Now I'm going to go ahead and put my pisiform over the top of that. And now I can apply my posterior to anterior pressure. Now textbooks at this point usually say do five or six thrusts. I don't really like to start with thrusts. I think you're asking for a little bit of trouble if somebody has, for example, some lumbar spine pathology or they are very flared up or very sensitive and you start pushing down with thrusts, you could scare them right off the table. What we're going to do is we're going to start with just a little bit of pressure, just like we're going to do a mobilization. Once I find a little bit of pressure, I want to communicate with my patient or client. Hey, Melissa, is that okay? Yes. That's not provoking any of your symptoms? No. Good. And once I know I'm comfortable and I know that she's not going to get any sort of flare up from this, essentially to clear it and to actually do the sacral thrust test itself. Now I'm going to apply my five or six thrusts and I'm going to think just like I would for a manipulation. Low amplitude, all right, so we're not going to move very much, but it's going to be very quick bursts, all right? So I get myself set up, my chest is over, over her sacrum, my arms are nice and straight, and I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. Hey, Melissa. Did that uh, provoke any of your symptoms? No. And if that didn't provoke her symptoms, we're probably in pretty good shape. Although I do have to admit with all of these three tests, and I'll wrap this up at the end, specificity is pretty good, right? We know if the, any of these tests are positive, they're probably coming from the SI joint. Unfortunately, sensitivity is not great, so they don't always pick things up. Let's go ahead and have you lay on your side, and let's do the compression test. Now the compression test, again, we're, we're applying pressure to the sacroiliac joint, only this way, or this time rather, we're gonna, we're gonna do this by, okay, she has her pelvis, her sacrum, her other pelvis, and we're gonna squish them together, like we're squishing a sandwich together. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna use one hand to cup the top of her top iliac crest. I'm then gonna put the other hand on top of it, and you have to apply a significant amount of force. Like it can't just be like, me like trying to do a tricep press down. Like that's not gonna work. Here's what I recommend guys. Make a nice broad base, apply some pressure, make sure your patient or client is comfortable. All right, so Melissa looks comfortable with my hand there. I'm gonna put my other hand over it. And then what I'm gonna do is just lean right down on top of her. All right, so now I have the whole weight of my torso. We're then gonna hold this for 30 seconds, right? And it's gotta be a lot of pressure. I know this is not comfortable but does it provoke your symptoms? And guys, that's always the right question, right? Like you don't want to ask, is this uncomfortable? Is this painful? Yeah, it's uncomfortable. I'm laying on top of her pelvis. Like that's not going to be comfortable for anybody. And then if you wanted to clear this, you could add some vigorous force. No provocation of symptoms. All right, just to essentially clear the joint. So we saw 30 seconds of compression, no symptoms. Vigorous force, no symptoms. She's definitely clear. This is definitely a negative compression test. So, so far we've done the sacral thrust, which looks like a sacroiliac joint PA, and we've done the compression test, which essentially takes her pelvis and squishes it like a sandwich. 
Now we have the distraction test. All right, so Melissa's gonna flip on her back. This is the one that I said is also called the anterior sacroiliac joint stress test. Distraction's a lot easier to say. This one's a little tougher to get your hands in the right position, so you're gonna need to kind of communicate with your client here. And what you're gonna do is you're actually gonna cross your arms this way. You're going to put your hands and this is the hard part. You gotta try to get their ASIS in the softest part of your hand so that you can apply some pressure without any pain. How's that? Not comfy. It's not gonna be comfortable, guys, but you gotta find the least uncomfortable one, the one that's not like jabbing the bones, their, their ASIS bones right into their skin. So once you find that place, then you can start pressing down, and because your arms are crossed, you're actually doing distraction of her ASIS a little bit. And what this is supposed to be doing is gapping the anterior portion of her sacroiliac joint while compressing the posterior aspect of her sacroiliac joint. Right, so we know if there are certain types of sacroiliac joint problems, for example, a strain to the anterior ligaments, this will provoke those particular symptoms. Right, so I'm gonna start here. And we gotta hold this for 30 seconds. So let's try to get into a position that's both comfortable for you and them, or at least as comfortable as you can. Again, adjust your hands if you need to. And then of course we're gonna clear this. Once I know she's okay, no symptoms? No. With a little bit of vigorous force, right? And you could do that vigorous force a few times. So with all these tests, guys, you'll see in books, a couple of them say hold for 30 seconds, a couple of them say vigorous force, a couple of them say use a thrust. Generally in the back of my mind, for all three of these tests, I'm thinking, okay, is pressure enough to provoke symptoms? Is holding pressure enough to provoke symptoms? Or is a thrust enough to provoke symptoms? If any of those are positive, then this is a positive test. If I can get through all three of those, and there's no symptoms, there's no concordant sign, right, that does not provoke the complaints that she came in with, then they're negative, right? All of these tests are negative. Thank you, Melissa. Now, one thing we do have to mention with these tests, these sacroiliac joint tests are fairly specific, meaning if you get positives on these tests, chances are it is a sacroiliac joint problem. The only problem with all sacroiliac joint tests, seemingly, is that they're not particularly sensitive, so people fall through the cracks. People with sacroiliac joint dysfunction can also end up being negative to these tests. So how are we gonna kind of fix that problem? Well, we're gonna use these th three tests often together, and we're also going to add a few more tests which we'll talk about later in future videos on sacroiliac joint pain clusters. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below.